Welcome to the Thinking Big Podcast. You are in for such a treat today with my very special guest, Sandra Hasley. Sandra is one of the founders of Generation Impact. It's a group that exists to help you refine, develop, launch, scale, and master your business to create the impact in life that you desire. Uh, Sandra is also one of the very select few keynote speakers for Tony Robbins and Dean Grazioski in their Knowledge Broker Blueprint Program, KBB, and she is currently helping build and head train all of their workshops for new entrepreneurs launching their businesses. One of my key takeaways from this episode is that every single one of us has a gift that we can use to build a business around. She even said that I can use my fluency in sarcasm as a platform. Who would have known? So today, we are thinking big into our passions and our impact to the world. Welcome to the Thinking Big Podcast with Sean Osborne, the show helping you think bigger into your life and potential. Sean believes by equipping you with the tools, strategies, and philosophies required to be successful in all aspects of your life, you can achieve anything you believe in. Empowering our own growth makes a deeply positive and lasting impact on our lives, community, and our world. Now, here's Sean. I want to welcome Sandra to the to the podcast. And I'm, if people are listening to this right now and they're driving, I'm just fair warning. I'm, I'm just telling you, you better pull over, keep your seatbelt on because <laughs> she is, Sandra is fast and furious and you better be paying attention when she's talking because <laughs> I, I normally can't even write that fast. I try, but, but I can't do it. <laughs> So keep your seatbelts on, keep your hands in the car, but pull over because you're about ready to go on a ride. I'm just telling you, I'm just being honest here. I, I'm st- I am still catching up on notes from our last stuff that you did. So I, I'm still trying to get my notes down. So welcome, welcome to the show. Tell people a little bit, I, I, your story is, is absolutely uh, fascinating of uh, where you've been and, and how you've gone. And that's, I really like to focus in on some of that because I think today, I mean, you've seen the kind of the gig economy, the side economy, these people starting their own, you know, their own businesses the last couple of years. But I think with what's happening with COVID, it's not just on the verge anymore. I mean, it is people are having to go and and kind of do their own thing. And we just don't know how we don't know. We don't know how. And you and that's what you've done. I mean, you've done this your whole your whole career. So tell us a little bit about you and kind of what the mindset or, or kind of what drove you to to where you are now. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I, I went through the traditional model, like, like a lot of people did through, uh, you know, I got a, I got a scholarship to play D- division one softball. And so, so I went that route and, uh, I studied engineering, finance, marketing. I graduated with a finance degree and, um, and I went into commercial real estate, into uh, commercial mortgage brokerage and, and then continued on into, uh, to work for a commercial real estate developer and in that space, I was, because I was the director of sales um, for this company, it was important to make sure that the tenants were doing well so that they could, you know, continue to pay rent and grow into additional properties or whatever. So I, from very, very early on in my career, I was um, not only analyzing the back end in their financials and looking at the way that they did their business to make sure that these loans would get approved, but um, also nurturing them as tenants, um, you know, through the years, making sure that I could help them in any way that I could. Um, and I, I became somewhat of a tenant coach for all of these different um, tenant clients. And there are so many different industries. I mean, like every industry that you can think of, the uh, between the mom and pop retail stuff to the international, like international freight to uh, e-commerce to tech, like everything. And so it was you know, that, that aside, I had carried that on throughout my entire, you know, corporate career. And it wasn't until I actually got fired from my job where I just, I just closed a $14.6 million deal, got fired, didn't get the bonus that I was supposed to get, got walking papers instead, where I was like, what now, now what? And then, you know, from that point, that was like, that was my career rock bottom for sure. I didn't think that was possible because I was the highest performer in the company. And I had such a great reputation in the community and my resume was just stellar. So how did that happen? This wasn't like, I, I didn't want to be an entrepreneur. I did not want that. Right. That sounded so scary to me. I, was, I considered myself very risk averse. Um, and the safety net 
that I had been taught throughout the traditional education model, get a job, um, retirement, 401k, savings, pension if you can, and then, you know, and then you live in your golden years and that's that. So do, do your best work and all that. And that was a lie. So now I'm sitting here in this space where it's like, all right, your best shot at this point when unemployment rates were very high and they didn't have an employment, uh, long-term unemployment available any longer, it was like sink or swim. So I didn't want it, but I had to do it. If you look back at that, do you think that was mm-hmm. probably the biggest blessing that you had? Oh, for sure. Yeah, for two years, it was uh, it was <laughs> depression. <laughs> and it wasn't until I you know climbed out of that that I look back and I like when I drive by that um, that former employer, every single time I'm in my car going, thank you, Jesus, that you closed that door for me. I would never have left on my own. And I know that I wouldn't because I was yeah. too scared. And I didn't think that that would have been a good life for me. Do you ever want to get a softball and just throw it at them? Get one yes, of your the nice. I, do. No, <laughs> I did for a long time. I did. And my, I was a pitcher. So my underhand's pretty, <laughs> pretty severe. But um, I did for a while. And my kids are, my older two, I have four kids. My older two can remember when that happened. And, uh, and they're 13 and 15 now. And we'll, sometimes we'll drive by there and they'll say like, hey, mom. Like, you still mad? And I'm like, no, not anymore. But they remember when I would drive by and say something to me before. So, yeah, but yeah, no, you're right. It, it was the biggest blessing ever. And um, and it was, I was pushed off the ledge like a baby bird and, and uh, learned to fly. And because of that, I was like, wait a second. This is so much fun. Not only is this fun, but like, this is nothing I went to school for. I went to school, finance, marketing, engineering, nothing I learned in, in university. And I loved my school. Not a single thing can I apply to my entrepreneurial journey, period. So I'm looking at all of this differently, right? So after that happened, after like my first year in business on my own in brick and mortar, opening a a wellness clinic, my husband's a chiropractor. So opening this wellness clinic and everyone's saying three to five years, take three to five years to get in the black. And it took me 18 months to turn six figures. So I, and I did that without loans, without uh, partnerships, without affiliates, without any client base at all. So when I did that, I thought, wait a second, like how, if, if everybody in this space is telling us this isn't possible for three to five years, what did we do right that I can help other people do right, right. so that they can save time? And like, I know what it's like to be, you know, mother of four trying to figure out what to do, brand new and entrepreneurial journey. And um, and if I got it right, I need to help other people because three to five years sounds like torture to me to get to where we needed to be, right? right. So that's kind of where it all started. And and after that, after the clinic opened and we started doing really well, we became, became the highest rated um, weight loss provider in the Buffalo market. Um, I was like, this wasn't my dream. I did this out of necessity. My husband was happy, but what about me? Um, and I went back to my roots. Like I loved, I loved being a consultant. I loved being a strategist for other businesses. I helped them. That was meaningful. Right. Like that made their lives better. That, that helped them advance in their career or it helped them earn more money for their families. Like that was meaningful to me. Right. And I've had so much fun doing it ever since. Yeah. And again, I think with what's happened with the, you know, with the economy, with the, you know, COVID, with all this stuff, that is going to be the way of the future. I really think it is. I mean, it's going to be how we do things and we have to learn these tools. I mean, we have to know what we're doing. And as you said, when we find someone that has been there, when we find someone that's done that, why not go that route and learn from, learn from them? I mean, that's the the only way to, absolutely. And just curious, like when you were doing your, you know, your corporate stuff, it, it sounds like you were still using I hate to say entrepreneur stuff, but you were, to me, you were still thinking outside the box to help them outside of what your normal job was. So. Oh, yes. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I never looked at it that way, but I, yeah, you're right. And, um, it wasn't a, it wasn't until like later on, like um, maybe recently even that I thought, um, I wasn't taught that. But it was why why was I doing it that way when I know other people in my business weren't doing it that way right. for their clients and their tenants? It's it's actually because I cared about them so much. And so and, I, and I'm looking at them and it wasn't like, hmm, let's see how we can get more money out of these clients. Let's squeeze them. Let's let, you know, it was more like you have a relationship with them as they become your client. 
and you get to know them and you like them. And then they tell you about their goals right. and you are an emotionally invested in their goals. And you're thinking of ways that you can help them. And it doesn't cost me anything to give them a good idea. And so when something sparks for me and I give them a good idea, they apply it and they win. I'm going, Ooh, what else can I give them? Right. You know? And so that's kind of where that began. And then that led to further success for me, um, you know, through my clients, uh, in business, but, but it was like, it was like an itch I needed to scratch. Like I have to help people if I can, I have to. So, um, but you're right. Those, those, those things that I was applying weren't taught to me, but, um, but I think that we all have, we all have these, like these baked in skill sets that we can offer other people and we never really tap into them unless the environment is like nurturing it. Right. So like, right. unless you step into that space and then all of a sudden you're like, Oh, I'm good at this or oh, I've got something to offer. And then that lights you. That's your thing. And like you talked on, you talked about how this, this COVID, um, this COVID year, this whole year has pushed people out of necessity into what are you going to do now? Like I was, but you know, different circumstances, right. what am I going to do now? And they have to learn. It's like, this is the scary thing for people. Like what, seriously, what do we do now? I have no idea. And I don't want to own a business and I don't know how. Um, so when it comes to that, it sounds, it, it almost sounds childish for me to even advise, Hey, what's your thing? What are you good at? That little thing that you do or that thing that lights you up doesn't even feel like work. I'm telling you to, to lean into that, like right. go into that space. There are a million ways you can apply your, your, your God given gifts into the business space and serve people at a high level and get paid for it. Most people don't believe that they can because they never have, I think. And, and I'm saying, Time to drop that nonsense. Yeah. It's not even true. Whoever gave you that belief, get over it. Like yeah. it's not true. It's bullshit. I mean, it, it truly is yeah. BS. Your it's your BS. It's your belief system, and it's a it's a bad. Uh, yeah. It's a bad. And on top of that, people don't necessarily think that their gifts that they have, they don't see the value in them. I, th I think that's the biggest thing that I see when I'm talking with people is they're good at something but they do not see the value in it themselves. And, and that's one of the hardest things I have in, in talking with people is, no, that is an absolute value. That is, people want to know that. People want to, people will pay you for that knowledge. And so, so you know, first step is letting them, letting them see, it. you know, what's the big, how do you let people see what their, what their gift is? I mean, what, what are ways that people can say, oh, this is my truly, you know, this is my gift. This is what I can give. Yeah. First of all, I got to hit that again. What you just said, most people don't believe that their gift is valuable. Oh my, that's, that's probably the biggest message that needs to come out of this episode is that people don't actually attach the value that they deserve to their gift. It's, it's unbelievable because when, even if it's this one thing, like, even if it's, I'm going to use knitting as an example, because it's like, people have come up with all these different hobbies during COVID. Right. So, so let's say this, um, this 60 year old woman, who is a banging crochet artist and can do the world's best booties and little baby sweaters and everything. And she's just been doing it since forever. And this young mother who's 34 and has been trying to get pregnant for 10 years. And it's been her dream to knit something for her own baby. And she's never been able to do it. She doesn't know how. And this woman who's just like diddling around with like knitting needles. And she's been doing that for decades. Doesn't think it's special because all of her friends can knit this woman comes to offer her, like, I will give you $1,000 if you can teach me how to crochet in six weeks before this baby is born so I can knit my baby booties and a sweater. I will, like, of course, people are doing that. People are doing that all over the world right now. Paying people uh, 1000 2000 $3,000 to learn how to crochet or knit in about six to eight weeks. It's happening all over the place. For a pastime that used to be so normal, it was taught in school. And I think that just people, if, if, you, if they have a value, if they have a skill set, I think that they need to um, do the research on what people are actually paying for it and then double it and start yeah. there. So when you say, how do you know, how do you know what your value is or what your, what your gift is, like what your skill set really is? The first place I like to go is the compliments you get from people. What do people say you're good at? Like, what do people thank you for? What do people always say? What are people referring your name out for? In, in, and that can be in, you know, in your personal life too. That doesn't have to be in business, but like anything. So if they're complimenting on you on something that you do well, it's probably something you enjoy. You know, it's it's not like, oh, my gosh, she's really good at balancing the books at the end of the year. She does it because she has to. She doesn't love it. But like, what do people say all year long that you're good at? Is it organization? 
like, oh, she, oh my gosh, she, this woman is so good at organization. It's like she can always find a way to clean things up for me or to like manage my stuff or to fix my kids' schedule during, you know, quarantine when it's been a mess or, you know, what is the, or this woman is the best like interior designer or this man is the best at, at, at troubleshooting pieces that you have around the house and being able to fix them up in this way. There are right. so many different things that people do on the regular that they get credit for that they're like, oh yeah, that's just something I do though. No, that's something you need to get paid for if you're willing. So what you're saying is I could actually get paid for being sarcastic. People compliment me on my sarcasm all the time. <laughs> so see, you, there's an okay, avenue I need to go. I'm going to take your sarcasm <laughs> and I'm going to raise you. <laughs> you could do a you could do a course on using sarcasm to leverage yourself in business for using sarcasm to um, build relationships in your business, in your personal life, in like mergers and acquisitions, there are negotiation strategies being taught through sarcasm right now in the world. Yes. That's, that's, you have a new business. That, that's actually my first language. English is my second language. <laughs> sarcasm is n- number one, truly. And you got to get on the There you yeah. go. <laughs> so from a tool standpoint or from a, uh, I don't know, a method standpoint, where do you see things? So you, you, you bring these people in, you, you show them, you know, here is what you're good at. Here's what you're passionate about. Here's the value you can add to other human beings. And what are the, what are the biggest challenges you're seeing on people when they do find this? How do they, how do they monetize it? How do they, how do they turn their gift and their passion into a, into a business? Yes. Good question. Perfect question. Because that's what matters in the end. So when you, when you, when you find your thing and you're like, oh my gosh, that's it. That is it. I love that. I could really make money doing that. Yes. Okay. So once you get on board with the, yes, I can, then it's a matter of, okay, well, where were you? When you started doing this, where were you? Where did you start? Okay. And where did you finish? You finished there. Okay. What were the steps in between that took you from, I'm just starting out to, Hey, I'm really good at this. This is amazing because there's always a pattern. There's always steps. There's always like evidence or breadcrumbs, a trail that you leave behind that can show other people how to get there too. And it's just a matter of actually taking a moment. And sometimes it's like taking a couple hours and, and falling back into your memory bank and saying, where did I, where did I start? Okay. Then what did I do? Okay. I did that for a while. Maybe that took me this long. And then what happened? What was the outcome after that? Then I learned this. Okay. Then I took that and I applied it to this and just stack those steps to get to the end result. And that is your signature offer framework. That is what you can deliver to other people. Package that up. And when I say package that up, I mean, define those steps. And then within the steps, there should be, you know, instructions on how to get to the next step, right? So that's just packaging your signature program so that you can show other people how to get to where you went. And, and this can be done. Another thing, Sean, is that people often say that, um, like they, they, they even stop mentally. They block themselves by saying, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't actually do that though, because I'm not a professional or I couldn't do that because like, I don't have a website or I can't do that because I don't have any acronyms at the end of my name. Like nobody cares about your acronyms. Do you know how many people have asked me about my degree since I graduated? None. Yep. Nobody asked me. They asked me, Oh, how'd you like working at Disney world? Oh, you got a, you got a congressional nomination for the Naval Academy. Oh, you've lived in Canada. Oh, you, they don't care about my degree. Nobody cares. They, like I'm showing up for the job. They assume I have the degree. That's it's like next. <laughs> so, and when you're online, nobody cares about any of that. They're like, prove it to me, prove it to me by way of showing me online that you can help me prove it to me by, by giving me trainings for free to let me know that I can trust you prove it. So you don't have to show them a degree because it's garbage. And I mean, like people who have a license for their degree, that's different. Lawyers, right. doctors, that, that's different. But I really, I really want a surgeon to have a degree when they're working on me. But um, <laughs> so, but I would rather have the surgeon that mentored with someone for 10 years over the degree. <laughs> the degree is, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'd rather have the experience. That's true. No, that's true. That's true. <laughs> That's true. I want I want an army surgeon who's been in triage <laughs> locations all over the world first. Um, mm-hmm. You're right. <laughs> so, but if they like you know if you show up and you serve people online with that thing, you know you show them that you can get them from point A to point whatever. You only have to be one step ahead of them. That's it. That's it. And they're and they're they people are often hanging on to this idea that they have to be the expert. There's no the expert in anything. I don't care how high up you go because somebody's coming right underneath to take that spot all the time. It's always right. shifting all the time. So there's nobody that's the best ever. So let's get over it. 
And let's just say, can you help them two steps behind you or one step behind you? Yeah. Because right. there are millions of people that that would apply to. So if you, if you can just outline the framework of your signature offer by indicating which steps it takes to get there for them and then marketing that. I can help you get from here to here. Here are the steps it takes. That's all it is. Here's what it looks like for me now. Here are the things that I struggled with and here's how it's going now that I don't struggle anymore. Here's the compelling future that I have, but here's how bad it sucked before I got here. If that sounds like you, come along. So it's just a matter of like marketing it that way, packaging up marketing that way, because if you're clear on what you can do for people and you let them know that, if you're clear, then they're clear, then they, they can decide for themselves. Yeah, that is something I want. I want that transformation too. This person has a step-by-step outline for me. Like I can just go to them to help me get there. Perfect. So it's, it's just a matter of that. And then it's a matter of, you know, sometimes you talk about value, right? Like people don't, don't necessarily value themselves, right? I tend to jump people up very quickly in their service pricing. However, I believe in being aligned with the offer that you have, because if you're not at first, you won't sell it. You won't sell it right. It'll be weird. It'll come off creepy. It'll be like, do they not believe in it or what's going on? It's usually the money. So it's usually they don't believe they should ask for this month much because they feel bad because they've done it for free in the past. Okay, so we need to also get over that. Now you're serving now you're serving people at a high level online and you need to get paid for it. So once they can do that, it's like, all right, if you can't energetically or emotionally or spiritually get behind, you know, a, a four figure number for a program that's that's good that you've been doing for, that you take people through on six to eight weeks or whatever, especially if it's a live training, that's worth that's worth more. If you can't really get behind it, there's nothing wrong with offering a lower a lower price. But you have to let them know this is the only time you're going to do that. This is the only time. This is a fourteen ninety nine program. The only time I'm ever going to do this is now. It is three ninety seven. This will be the last bunch. But in exchange for that extreme discount, I, I'm going to require testimonials, yep. possibly even testimonials, so that you can build that authority and that credibility and that social proof. And then what's beautiful about this is that then you do get paid. You get paid the money, and that proves to you that you can do it. And then you do the work. And you're like, oh, we're not, we're not doing this for 397 again. Right. Oh no, <laughs> this is worth way more. Because yep. you find out it's hard, yep. right? It's a little hard. Even if you love it, you gotta, you gotta help people. So that I feel like that process, everybody kind of goes through that. They create the structure, they start talking about it, they start helping people with it, they come up with a price, um, a lower price that they feel a little better about, a little bit more aligned with at first. And then they're like, oh no. And then they like triple it or quadruple it. And they're like, okay, I feel good about this for now. And then you get better. And as you get better and the demand gets higher, you can increase it as you go. But that's, that's where people need to start. Yeah. And I, I think you, at that exact point, when they sell their first stuff, it's lower than what they want. But I think right then is mm-hmm. where I see the biggest mindset change in people. Once they, once you... I mean, success builds upon success. And once they get that first batch out of the way, the first money coming in, the, when they first sell it, that's when I see the biggest change in in people's yes. mindset of what they're capable of and what they can do. And you'd mentioned something, mm-hmm. I, and I think it was probably one of my biggest setbacks is when I first started you know, years ago, I thought I had to have all the technology in place. I thought I had to have the whole program done. I thought I had to, and that's not how people do it. I mean, you look at some of the great people and they're literally building programs on the fly based on the needs of the people. And, you know, if you try building an entire, you know, 10 week program and you haven't tested it and you haven't developed it with people, I've done that. If it, I, I've, I've gone through the oh, biggest part. You, if you build it, they will come. No, they won't. <laughs> You've got to build it with people. They won't. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried. <laughs> Doesn't work that way. But no, yeah. I did the same thing. It's the worst. It's, you waste a ton of time doing it that way. And you think you know. As good as you are, as good as anyone is, you think you know. And you have no idea. You always assume people are further along with you. They're not. Right. You got to back, back it up. And you also have to fill all these holes that you didn't think about. So I'm with you. Like, I, I believe in... I believe in live training 
the first batch. I don't believe in course creation above other things, but there is a place for course creation for sure. But I believe in the, the live interaction. There's so much more value there. It's better for everybody. Um, you're in the moment. They have the your clients have the ability to do Q and A with you. It's just better. And then what's beautiful about that is that you know, Sean, like you extract you extract what they need in that moment. And say say you did a six week course, like a live training course, and they showed up every Monday for two hours for six weeks. And that first week, you gave them this stuff that you had for the first week. And then at the end of the program, at the end of that two hours, you were like, hey, guys, how did you do? How did you like? What did you not? Are we clear on this? And then you're thinking, OK, I'm ready for week two. And then they answer you and you're like, oh, you guys are not ready for week two. I'm going to have to come up with something else. But because you're the expert, you know what they'll need based on their reaction. And then you just shift and, and adjust for that. But you would otherwise you would have wasted how many hours, how many hours creating this course that you can't even use after week two. Yeah. And what do you there. what do you think uh about to me even for me sometimes the biggest thing about going live is the fear people have people would rather die than go live i mean it's like that is the biggest fear people have and it's like man how do we get over that because as you said you can build stuff and build stuff and and no one's gonna unless you have that energy from the I, i'm the same way i love doing live because to me it forces me to think more into what the people need you see them, you're, you're getting feedback and it's almost like a mastermind. You, you, you can't think about that without those people, those people for me, yeah. it drives better, better content. It drives better ideas. It drives better things. But that point of do, going live, hitting that live button or doing things with, with people, it scares the crap out of you. even people who were doing it live in the past in person. You get in front of a camera and people change. They do. I think. They what are really some of the do. yeah? What are some of the things that you do with your clients that help them with the you know? The, to me, it's it, and it's all fear. It's all bullshit and it's it's all in your head. But it, it it's there. Okay, so I I was I was there too. Like you know, I'm a I'm a, a trained keynote speaker. I can get on stages and do this. I can get on virtual stages and do this. Um, but that was not always the case. And I didn't even get on social media until 2019. So um, I, when, when somebody, and it wasn't until somebody said to me, um, you need to be going live. Like you're not translating any of your personality or any of your uh, help online. And I'm like, yeah, I hate social media. So I'm not doing it. And I, you know, this, this, the, to me, all it was is a bunch of like comparison BS, like uh, just, just um, brag fest. I just, I hated the idea of this toxic online space. I hated it. So I, I just, I just blackballed it. And then somebody challenged me to say, okay, you do one live and you help people in the way that I know you do in your clinic and in real life and in, with your clients and everything, you go live and do it online. If you don't help anybody and nobody wants to hear it, I'll never ask you to do it again. But if you do, you do another one. And I was like, oh, you're on, <laughs> you're on. I'm about to like break friends and this is going to be. So I went live and before I did, I had, so I have anxiety and panic disorder anyway. So I was, I, when I say that I was shaking, like I had cold sweat and I was shaking and I was like doing deep breathing exercises because I was being, I was being like, there, she was in the corner. I was being forced. <laughs> so I had to press the button. I went live. I go, I can go back and look at that live and I'm like, oh gosh, you were so nervous. Why, why were you so nervous? And I blocked a bunch of people on my live. Like you can block people on your friends list from seeing that live, which yep. was felt safe for me. I'm like, okay, I'll just keep those sarcastic people out of the way. Sean's not watching. So, well, <laughs> <laughs> but I just didn't want any, like, I didn't want to field any jokes or anything else. Cause like everybody knew I don't go online. So all of a sudden Sandra's going to show up online. Who does she think she is a hypocrite? You betcha. So after that, I got such good feedback from people and I was like, I have to help them. Now I have to like, not because somebody said, but because these people are hurting and they were so grateful. Now I have to. And so for me, when I teach other people how to, how to get over the fear of going online, you often have to challenge them to do it in a way that's meaningful for them. Like, here's the outcome. If you, if you do this challenge and when I do that, there's ways to do this where like, you're looking at the camera and on the other side of the camera for me, 
is my dream client, my ideal client that I know that I can help. And, and maybe it's a best friend of mine that's been sitting on my couch in tears before because she can't figure out how to get to the next step. And I'm saying, you are so good at this. It's on the other side. You have to do this. Here's why. Here's what this looks like. If you could just get over the fear part, just block that for a second. Here's what's available for you. All of this. And so when you look through the lens and know that there's a breathing heartbeat soul on the other end of that lens, that it's not this big like chasm of judging people. It's a, it's a soul that needs your help on the other end of that camera lens. Does that change your mind? Does that make you feel differently? Because I'm, I can tell you now, as fearful as I was for so long, and sometimes still am when I go up to speak, and I don't know if you ever get that too, but like oh, I yeah. still get, get nervous uh, before speaking, right? And, and so if there was, I've decided that if there was an audience of 5,000 people and they were all like making fun of me, rolling their eyes on their cell phones, ignoring me, but there was one person in the back of the room in tears because they were so grateful for what I was saying, I would keep going despite anybody else yep. and their opinion of me because that person's in pain. That's, I think that's how most humans are built. So if you can, if you can just imagine that there's somebody that needs your help on the other end of that, like you've established that you're good at something, you know, that your thing has value, you're going to price for it. Now you got to talk about it, talk about it because somebody needs your help. Not because you're worried, like, don't worry about the friends and family that might be like, Oh, he's going online now. That's interesting. How about block them? If you don't like it, how about hide their, hide their eyes from your live? Or how about ignore the fact that they're judging you at all because they might be cheering you on quietly. And the other thing is, if they're not, are they paying your bills? Do yep. they help you financially? Do they have a say in what you do with your life? Like all of these things. And you know, too, Sean, like all of these things are limiting beliefs that keep you from greatness. And I feel like if we could all have a snapshot view of what our life could look like, if we were to say no to all those fears all along the years, if we would have said no to all those things, what would we have right now? I feel like we would all be heartbroken yep. if we could do that. So if we can now say, all right, COVID's forcing us to pivot. Things are pressure, like things are pressurous all around me. I, I want to, I want to do something with this, but I don't know how. Can you just decide that fear doesn't get to say anything this time and just try it and see? Because the, the, the worst thing that will happen is that you'll learn something great out of it. And most probably you'll do well, most probably. Yeah. And I think, especially with, you know, with what's going on, we can't meet in person like we, we had in the past. I mean, this is, and, and this is great. I mean, we yeah. see each other on here. We're, you know, we're communicating on online. It's still not the same from a personal standpoint, but it's better than, than not. It's better than to me, just posting stuff. It's like, you're still, we still have a connection. I'm still looking, looking at you in your eyes. We're still having a connection. We're still doing that. And it's, to me, that video is so, so important. And, and it's where we, I'd say it, but it's where we're going. We have to, we have to be able to do that in order to be successful. I think in any business that's online now, you have to be able to have, because without that live, without that interaction, you're not going to build the connections. And to me, that's what it is. It's, it's not making a sale. It's not selling someone. It is absolutely making a connection with someone and you can't do it without, without video. You really can't. I mean, not in the same way. You're right. And not in the same way at all. And there are two things, two beautiful things that have happened out of COVID for this reason. First of all, people are disconnected from brands, from big brand names, from big box retailers, from global brands. They're disconnected. Nobody has a relationship with Coca-Cola. You might have nostalgia with Coca-Cola and emotions tied to the brand, but you don't have a relationship with them because they're not a person. But they, you can have relationships with individuals who are serving you and spending their time and their heart and their energy and their bandwidth trying to help you. You have a relationship with those people and you do that by way of video, connecting with them to like, cause you need, you need the proof that they're like living, breathing, moving, right? right. Like anybody could catfish with a photo online. <laughs> you need proof that this person is a person. And so the second thing, so that's one beautiful thing is that, that the individual brands, like the self-branded, like the use, the me's, the, the people out here that are doing their thing online, people build relationships with us and they trust us and they love us and we love them back and trust them back. And this is how we do business because it's not transaction, it's relationship. Right. And then the second thing that's beautiful is that now no one has an excuse to not get online. The physicians that I used to work with, oh, my clientele, my patient base is, you know, 60, 60 years and older. They'll never get online. They're like, oh, these guys are younger. They don't have time to get online. They don't check emails anymore. 
Not anymore. Now the entire globe yep. is forced to create Zoom meetings, interact online. This is it's it's a four speed and telemedicine has come. I don't know, like five years in the last three months. It's yeah. amazing now. And everybody sat on their hands because they didn't feel like it because they got other things to do. And now that we're all being forced, everybody knows how to do business with you. There's no excuse anymore. And people are comfortable with it to the extent. That it's almost like we got fired from uh, our job of normal living. We got fired from our normal way of, of doing things. And now this is we're forced to do this. This is, you know, sink or swim. You're going to do it or you're or you're not. Yeah. And so one of the things, so you are doing your uh, generation impact stuff, which is to me, that, that is such a great name for, for what you're doing. What, what is generation impact? What, what are you guys doing over there? First of all, thank you. We ruminated over that name for a long time because, because of our intentions for people. Um, generation impact was born out of the idea that, um, we, we, my, me and my partners, Shane Thrault and David Waldy, we decided that, um, you know, the people that we're meeting in the online space, like you said, didn't believe in themselves enough. They didn't realize where their value was lying. They didn't understand that they, they're like walking treasures to the world. And we're saying, if you could tap into that and give it to other people, do you understand what kind of impact you could make? So we're saying this whole generation of people that is willing to step out and say like, what's my gift? How, help me serve. You can make the biggest impact. You have no idea. Generationally making impact too on other people's generations, depending on what you do. Wealth, generational wealth is available, like health, like relationships. It's all available to people. And we're saying, all right, as generation impact, what can we do to be the first domino that knocks down all these other dominoes that makes the impact across the world? And so what we do is we have two, we have basically two legs of the company where the one we are teaching, we have an academy that teaches entrepreneurs online, how to grow and scale their business, how to be efficient, how to, how to create those sales, how to market themselves properly, how to build a team, how to deploy this brand for themselves. And then secondarily, we have a consulting side where we consult with corporations and we build training materials for them, workshop trainings. We help their, their team learn new mechanisms for sales and marketing online in this space and shifting and growing and, you know, basically all the strategy that you need as you change in a company and companies are kind of notorious for doing things an old way until something gets pretty painful and they're forced to shift. Well, if we could help them avoid that pain and grow bigger without as much cost, then we're going to do that too. So, so we're basically helping B2C and B2B at the same time in different ways. Right. And I, you know, I think that is so important that, uh, you have these, you have these tools and the and companies like yours available because you can truly compress with with what you do. You can help someone compress something that might take them a few years to learn and 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 develop in an extremely short amount of time. And and I think one yeah. of the one of the best things that I'm seeing out of out of COVID is you know the people that you're helping and you know, you're helping them generate their their passion their love into businesses. I have been out and absolutely fascinated with some of the great imagination and the great things that people are starting to produce and put out there to the world. I, I think that is one of the greatest things that has happened with, with COVID is people are now seeing that and I'm starting to see these companies or these people develop their, their companies. And some of the stuff is just amazing of, of what they're doing, the, the ideas that they're coming up with. It's, it's absolutely amazing to, to watch these people, finally open up and develop what they were to me, what they were really meant to do. Yes. The, the, I don't know the, the, they're so industrious, like humans are so, they surprise me every day. And every time I see not only the memes, they've been really uh, giving me life this year, but, um, but the, but the inventions and the ideas and the, and the way that people are willing to say, oh, let's see, let me, let me try, let me shift it and try it this way. And you're going, yeah, like you can do it. I feel like I'm just on the other side of the screen, like cheering people on all the time because of every new idea. And there are so many when we're forced to, to figure stuff out and get creative. It's amazing what we can come up with. But like you said, I feel like, like we, we birthed a new way of life in this COVID like time and the time of COVID. And it's almost like those like those cartoon reels where you see all the men in suits and hats and what they're walking in black and white. And they're all like, you know, a mob of men just walking to work with briefcases. And then there's somebody over here in color, like bouncing around doing things differently. I feel like that's where we're going now, where this was yeah. the way of the, of the past. And this is the way now it's more fun. It's more free. There's more opportunity because people are willing to see things a little differently. 
Yeah. And with what's available now, with the technology that's available and, and where people's mindsets are, anybody can be a company. Anybody can be an author. Anybody can be a speaker. Mm -hmm. Anybody. You, you have everything you need to be as big as anybody else. There's nothing. Now there is nothing yes. holding, holding people back. You have the same assets available to you as a entrepreneur, as a solopreneur than big companies had in the past. You can now, that, that's the biggest thing is from literally from your phone, you can create content. You can create, you can create amazing things with just the simplest stuff that you have now. And, and it's all available to everybody if they know, if they have the mindset. So you, you know, that's where you come in is you help them with the mindset that they can do it. And here's how you do it. But no longer is, to me, no longer is technology or no longer is all these big, you know, brick and mortar assets that people had. That's not a, that's not a stopper anymore. That absolutely not a stopper. Anybody no. can create anything. And that's the biggest thing I see is anybody can create anything that they want now. It's amazing, isn't it? Like that, that sounds like if you said that in the eighties, people would be like, okay, big thinker, settle down. Yeah. But now it's like, there's nothing more true. I mean, you don't need a website. You don't need a website to get started. You don't need it. You yeah. don't even need that. So you don't even have to pay to host what you have. You have free access to any social platform online. And if you market yourself that way with your cell phone, sure, you have to pay for internet and like a cell phone bill, but that is it. That's it. So th the opportunities really are available to everybody. Kids, teenagers, young teenagers, kids younger than that are making money online right now doing whatever they're good at. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's, it's wild. It's, it's like the, the new gold rush. <laughs> it, it is. So, absolutely. You, yeah. And, and people are, you know, they're creating this, this sense of freedom for them. So, like, there's nothing better. There's nothing, but there are some things, but there's nothing better for me when, um, when an entrepreneur finally gets to the point where they're like, okay, fine. No, 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 you're right. I'm going to get out of my head and I'm just going to do the things. Let me do those things and launch myself. I'm going to put myself out there. And I'm like, yes, 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 let's do it. And then they get paid and say they have like a 5,000 or a 10,000 or like a 27,000 launch. Or, or they, they have that, that conversation with a new client and they sign a $45,000 contract like this. And I'm going, how did that change your life? Talk to me about the things you can do now. Talk to me about how you can grow your business now. Talk to me about how now you have a team. Now you have more time because your team's doing some of the work. And now you can actually, I don't know, take your first vacation ever with your children in 10 years. What is that like? Like th those kind of wins are exponential because I know they're helping their clients. So let's not even talk about that. But like, how did your life change? It's, a, it's amazing. They're saying, with my camera phone and my computer, that's all it took. Yeah. A little belief in yourself, too. That's all it took. Yeah. And it's funny. It's when uh, it's a that moment, and I'm sure you see this a lot, it's that that moment, you actually see it in their eyes. You actually see it in their stature. When, when that light goes off, you, you, can, you can physically see that light going off in their, in their head and you're like, what? Oh yeah, this is, this is, it's, it, we can do this. Yeah. That, to me, it's that that's so the funnest good. thing. Yeah. And so you, but see, you've done that your entire, see, and that's the thing you one of to me, one of your gifts is yes, you care about your, you know, all your clients, you care, you, you care that they are successful. You care that they get what they want, but you've done that your entire career. So you, even when you were doing your real estate stuff, you were, that's part of your DNA. That, that's part of who you are of, of helping people and, and everything you do, you actually, you know, I, I see that in you on all this. I've seen you on stage. I've seen you, you know, on doing your stuff. And that always comes out that you absolutely care about the outcome of the person and that it, it does. It, it absolutely shows if I could, I, I don't process data that fast. Again, I'm going back to, you are so good and so fast at what you do. It's like, I can't process it that fast. It's so much, so much great data. I'm like <laughs> bouncing around in my head. So let me ask you this on a percentage. If we had a percentage of 50% of or could you strike me out with the softball still? Yeah. hundred <laughs> <laughs> So you didn't even have to think about that. And then you say you're from Canada. No, because oh, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say because two things, um, because muscle memory is a little ridiculous. When you play a sport for so long, it's not hard to pick it back up pretty quickly. But also because most people can't hit, a, hit an underhand fast pitch. 
uh, especially men who are used to playing uh, baseball and they're, they're looking for the overhand release. So that's usually that even, even my baseball player buddies like D one, like I would pitch to them, we'd, we'd mess around and I'd pitch to them <laughs> and it, it wasn't that hard to strike them out. And <laughs> they're D one baseball players. Like, but would it, it's would just, it piss them you know, off? I bet it would piss them off too. What's that? I bet it would piss them oh, off too. Oh yes. <laughs> And then They're, also, yeah, macho, macho athlete. <laughs> and also being from Canada, do you know what a loony and a toonie is? Of course, of course. See now, this is our transactional currency. <laughs> but no one actually used it. So we went to me and my wife. We went up to uh, I think Quebec City a couple years ago, and I convinced her to always talk like she was going to pay in loonies and toonies. People there thought she was a nut, but I convinced her that she had to call them loonies and toonies. <laughs> <laughs> so she's never lived that down. And finally, they do. But finally someone said, they do. what are you, if we don't call them loonies and toonies, we're just in the background no, cracking no, no, up. No. You're, because you went to Quebec City. Yes. And that they're very French speaking. So they're not going to call them that probably. Uh, correct. And so anywhere <laughs> else in the southern part of Canada, is if you say a loony and a toonie, and for our listeners that don't know, I'm sure some people are Googling it. Like, what is that? But but a loony is just a dollar coin and a toonie is a $2 coin. And so um, Canadians don't use uh, uh, pennies anymore. They're no longer a part of the circulation. So everything rounds up to an even number. Um, but uh or, or like a five or a zero, but, um, but if you go, if you, you are safe, Sean, if you go, if you bring your wife to Southern Ontario <laughs> and you said Looney and Tootie, they'd be like, yeah, yeah, no, I got it. But, um, but, but Quebec city, all like Montreal, all like all the Quebecois will, um, they'll prefer it if you speak French period. Yes. Period. And I don't do it well, so they don't like it. <laughs> I, I don't do there. it at all, but it was a uh, man. We loved it up there. It was absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Isn't it beautiful? Yes. Yeah. It was cold. Yeah, they're 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 very It was very cold. When did cold. you go? Uh New Year's. So we went New Year's Eve. We did some big oh, rave, yeah. outdoor rave. New Year's Eve. It was wild. But yeah, it was it was cold. I'm from Texas. Yeah. Well, I'm from Colorado, but so oh. I, I've acclimated to Texas and it's damn cold. It's Your no, blood wasn't ready. <laughs> no. It was not ready at all. But I've had an absolute fantastic, uh, fantastic time. I, thank you for for coming on on the podcast. And everybody, go to Absolutely. you know, we're going to put you know those listening go to the show notes because we're going to have all the ways that you can contact uh, Sandra and also going to generationimpactgroup.com. I'm telling you, this is the way. This is the way of the future. And everybody, th- th- here's the thing: I think every household in the next year or two is going to have a business. Every household is going to have a side gig, a side business from doing what they love. Some being forced like you, you know, they're, they've lost their jobs. They've lost their way of income. Uh, some just because they have the desire to do it, but everybody is going to, every household is going to have a side business. And I just love the stuff that you guys do. So thanks so much for being on, uh, being on the podcast and adding so much value. Oh, thank you for having me. I love it.